Husker Bot 3000 welcomes you to the Blue Collar Sports Talk Show. Welcome to Blue Collar Sports Talk. Here's a quick rundown of what we're going to talk about today. Husker Volleyball, we have a couple of matches coming up this weekend. Husker Football takes on Louisiana Tech at home at 2.30. Next week, Nebraska takes on Michigan. We're going to take a look at Michigan's opponent this week. They're at home against Rutgers. Number 19, Colorado at number 10, Oregon. Big 10, number six, Ohio State at number nine, Notre Dame. Arkansas goes to the Bayou to take on number 12, LSU. Two Big 10 foes, number 24, Iowa on the road at number seven, Penn State. Switching gears, NFL, the donkeys go down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. The Dirty Birds of Atlanta, the Falcons go to Detroit Motor City to take on the Lions. The Saints go to Green Bay to take on the Packers. The Chargers go to Minneapolis. We'll see what happens with the Chargers at the Vikings. The Cowboys take on the hapless Cardinals. We'll see what happens there. Monday night doubleheader. Eagles at the Bucks. Rams at the Bengals. We'll give you our final thoughts. And now, here's our show. All right, everybody. Welcome to Blue Collar Sports Talk. We have a wonderful jam-packed show for you. We have Peter here again today. Yeah, guys. How are you doing? And James again here today. Morning. And, of course, Darrell, the Daryl. Let's run right into it here, shall we? Husker Volleyball. This weekend, we have a lot of stuff going on. We have... um, Coming in to Lincoln, Ohio State, number 21, Friday, that's 8 p.m. match. And then Sunday, number 12, Minnesota, that should be a great one. That's another BTN match. That one's at 6.30. And I pulled up a quick little stat. We have freshman setter Bergen Riley. She's currently ranked fifth right now in the Big Ten in assists. Oh, yeah. At 9.63%. So we just have an amazing, amazing crew on all, uh, for a volleyball team right now. And I hope we get Lainey Choboy back. She was in uh, concussion protocol, and then Lindsey Krause had an unfortunate accident, right. a, a car accident, and she was banged up a little bit, had some bumps and bruises, so hopefully she comes back. I think she's already been ruled out for the Ohio State game. Yeah. Okay, I haven't heard. That's why yeah. I was curious. That's a bummer. Yeah. Mm. And- but. I mean, Ohio State coming in limping, losing a few games. I think they just got swept by Stanford. They lost their last six against ranked teams. Uh, but it's Ohio State division, I'm sorry, conference game at home. You got to defend home court. And then we know what Minnesota does. So Both of those at home, though, this week. Yes. That will be huge, nice. Huge. Yeah, currently, uh, as of rankings, the 18th, just a couple days ago, Wisconsin is sitting number one. And Nebraska's number two, Florida three, Stanford four, who we've played and beat already. Louisville has already had a loss. And they're fifth, Oregon's sixth. Normally, you see a few more Big Ten in the top ten, but for right now, it's Nebraska and Wisconsin. And Nebraska just moved up because they were were number four, right, last week, moved up number two. Yeah, that really, that was huge for us to beat, beat Stanford, so... Switching gears a little bit to Husker football, Uh, a bunch of stuff in the news. Everybody's been talking about it. Everybody's been talking about all the injuries for the Huskers. Before we get to the Huskers, we were talking about it before we recorded. A former Husker, Casey Thompson, is out for his current team. That's a bummer for him. And that will lead us into our list of crazy injuries. 
Oh, yeah, and, and huge unfortunate, it's a double whammy at the same position. I mean, you get an injury here or there, different positions, you can kind of, you know, you got the next guy. You're at the next, next guy, because it's starting two running backs, Ramir Johnson and uh, Gabe, Irving. Gabe Irving, thank you, uh, out. Yes, so, and they both need surgery. Yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Once Gabe a Irvin, hip flexor. Yeah, Gabe sorry. Irvin has a dislocated hip, and he's going to need yeah. surgery for that, they were saying. And Ramir Johnson dislocated his shoulder, which also requires surgery to get it all completely fixed up. And, oh, man, Ramir is just starting to get some groove going. I was loving it. I Last game, I know he kind of threw the ball a little bit more, and I think that was dictated by the, the defense, even with the young, you know, the – Harburg's first start, but they ran the ball not amazing, but well. I ran it, but I mean, they didn't blow the team out, but they played great ball control. They punted when they needed to, and they capitalized when they had to. And it it was a nice, easy win, I guess, you know, there wasn't any stress. It wasn't a one score game. It wasn't, hey, how, how are we going to respond in the fourth quarter? They did what they needed to do. Got a couple first downs late when they needed to. It was nice. Yeah. Rule also said he hasn't decided on who's going to start between Sims and Harburg. And that's that's been the running joke for all the people that I've been talking to. Hey, we've got a great running back that's actually listed as a quarterback in Sims. Why don't we just move him over to running back and leave Harburg alone yes. at the quarterback spot? Mm-hmm. Um. Against Northern Illinois, Harburg ran for 98 yards and one touchdown. Passing, he went 14 for 24 for two touchdowns. La Tech is not a good school when it comes to football. They lost one earlier to... Did they lose North Texas last week? There you go. They did. They lost to North Texas. We we called that the other way. We did because Louisiana Tech was looking good its first couple games. And whatever reason, yeah, I was was kind of keeping an eye on that game. And I was like, oh, my. Wow. Talk about either looking past them to Nebraska. Maybe it was a trap game for them. Yeah, and they put up a lot of points on them. They lost 40-37, to so not a whole lot of defense on either side. A few days ago when I wrote this up, the overs and unders were 47. Those haven't moved. But Nebraska is now favored by 21. They were 20 when I checked this out earlier in the week. Um I'm taking Nebraska all day long, and I'm thinking they're going to cover because our defense is stout. If uh, I, I know that's crazy for us to say we're going to cover a 21 point spread, isn't it nice though to be thinking that mindset though? <laughs> yeah, it is good. Huge. It is good. It's definitely different than a couple of years ago when you're like, uh, "Are we going to make 14 points in the whole right. game?" Yeah. No. Fact. I mean, Georgia Southern last year, it wasn't. Are we going to cover? It's like, you know, can we get a squeeze out a win? And obviously they didn't. But, yeah, here we have a team we should beat, and we're talking about them covering a 20-point spread. That's that's huge. As far as the overs, I, I don't know. Last week we put up 46 uh, against Northern Illinois, and I I don't know. We, yeah, we, we scored 35 points. 35, yeah. And the overs last week were 42 and a half. Um, I, I still think Nebraska covers the 21, but I don't know that 47, I, I, I would, me personally, I wouldn't be able to choose one way or the other on right. that. And I think we're all in agreement here. Nebraska comes in and just rolls. Did, did you hear the conspiracy on that on a side note? So Nebraska's up 35 to three, right? And it wasn't, it wasn't covering the over. It was under it. <clears throat> so they said that Nebraska was told to let them score. I went, dude, I, I said, I'm not saying there's not any conspiracies, whatever. I'm just saying Nebraska had the backups playing pretty much the fourth quarter, all the defensive backups, right? I said, even uh, Northern Illinois had their backup quarterback in and a couple of reserves. I don't know about their old line or who they were, but it was the second and third string, string people that went down and scored that. It wasn't like they kept starters in to make it look good. You know, and then they got a two-point conversion that they didn't need. For me, I'm like, if you're the defensive guys, you're not letting them score. Because you right. know in practice, 
coach is going to rip your butt. Well, you should have held him to three. Well, you shouldn't have let him score. Well, yes. Y- y- and then you're going to be running up downs the whole time. Right. It's like, no thanks. Exactly. They're you, priding them to not give up a touchdown. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You're going to get your butt ripped for that, and you're going to get your butt ripped for the two-point conversion. Well, you should have stopped him on both. You had two chances. You should have stopped him both mm-hmm. times from getting in the end zone. Well, Nailed it. Because the only three they gave up was off the turnover at the five-yard line. Mm. So they already get a field goal, and the defense held them. So, yeah, anyway, I, I thought that was funny on the over-under thing. Uh, I agree with you. I'm not touching the over-unders. I would like, I mean, they're, uh, Louisiana Tech's giving up 200 yards rushing. I would love to see Sims go off for 200 on his own rushing. Hubbard at quarterback. Uh, Nebraska runs for 350. That would be great. And the defense, just keep doing what you're doing. But please, can we get a turnover? We dropped a couple last week, I think two. I, man, let's start taking the ball away so teams really have to start fearing that a little bit more. I like your dream world where Sims is, is, is running back. I like it. Realistically, it'll never happen. I just, I just don't ever see that happening. But I agree. Um, Louisiana Tech's defense is not stout. And, and ours, even if... Even with the numbers that Shadour Sanders put up, on the average, pass yards allowed, 238 per game. Yeah. That's really good. And, and then you factor in the 500 that Shadour had. Wow. We're really holding teams to a low low passing yard percentage and then 46 yards per game rushing. You're not rushing on us. Yeah, and I think they, they're trying to take advantage of trying to throw on them, and it's not working either. And I. And once they start taking the ball away, these corners start sitting on these routes and grabbing the ball. That'd be great. But this three three five, watching it, it doesn't even look like a three three five. I, you know, but as I watch it, that's sort of the best thing about it. The blitzes come from different angles. The linebackers come from different angles. It keeps the quarterback on his toes. And I, I, I mean, yeah, it's nice to actually be able to talk black shirts and not gray or white, right? Yeah. Oh, man, it's nice seeing a defense out there doing its thing, finally. Nebraska's next opponent, Michigan. Number two, Michigan. They're at home against Rutgers. They're playing a Big Ten foe. And the overs and unders are at 44. Michigan's favored by 24. I don't see Michigan having any issues with Rutgers. Covering either one of those numbers. Yeah, I think they blow them out. Just, just hurt them bad. I, but, I strongly disagree. But yeah, I was gonna say that's why that's why I said but. I I think they blow them out, but I don't know if they're gonna cover twenty four, because you look at um their first two. They've they beat UNLV thirty five to seven. Eastern Carolina they beat thirty to three. They're holding people under 10 points a game, sure, but they're not winning by 50, 60 points. So, yeah, Michigan wins. I wouldn't touch I wouldn't touch the line cuz I I personally think Rutgers could easily cover the 24 and I would stay under the 44, but I wouldn't touch it personally. Yeah, right. Uh Rutgers is scoring 30 points a game themselves, so I'm yeah, Michigan's going to beat them. I could see Rutgers getting 17, 20 points, Michigan getting up in that 35 range. Uh, these beginning of the season here, and I know it's early, it's only their third game, fourth game. This will be their fourth. Uh, they've gotten off slow starts. I mean, the Bowling Green game was a slow start, and even the UNLV one, it was more of a second half game. So if Rutgers keeps it close early, you know, and tests them at the, the second half, you know, who knows? But yeah, I would definitely stay away for that 24 points or take Rutgers and run with the points. Is, is this Jim Harbaugh's first game back, though? Because didn't he no, have that the, three Nebraska, game? The next game. Oh. Yeah. The Nebraska game will be his first one back. Okay. Because he's suspended for four total, and this is the fourth game. Okay. And with Rutgers, they held Virginia Tech to 16 points. And their very first game, they held Northwestern to seven. Their next one, Temple, they held them to seven. Their defense is stout. They're averaging yeah. just a sh- just yeah just a, a a feather under seventy yards allowed rushing yards per game. Yeah, again, yeah. If you want to take take Rutgers and the points, but yeah, I do see Michigan still pulling out the W though. Right, and again, my play money 
Michigan wins, Rutgers covers, and I would I would take the unders, but who knows? Yep. I mean, you're looking at Rutgers. They're rushing for 210 a game, and Michigan's giving up 81. So somewhere in there, you're gonna you're gonna have a break point. So I <clears throat> I could see Rutgers with about 100 yards of rushing. I don't think that wins them a game against Michigan. I think a lot of people this year, especially, are picking Michigan in that national um, finals conference, you know, championship game. And so I'm I'm gonna say Michigan. I'm not gonna say they uh, meet the over or cover the points, but man. After you guys' arguments, I, before this, I was I was thinking they'd cover both of them, but maybe they don't. I'm gonna take that Michigan, but uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say under, and I'm gonna say they don't cover at 24. I think I think that is a good. That's a good outlook. It, it's interesting to see that Rutgers ru- running back actually has more yards than Corum, but he, but he also has quite a few more carries. Yeah. J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback, is just lights out right now. 701 yards for the season, seven touchdowns and three interceptions for for three games. That's that's pretty pretty yeah. stout numbers. Moving on. Especially um, for a running team like Michigan. Right. Yeah. Um, Colorado, Oregon. Everybody loves to talk Colorado this year. Everybody loves wow. to talk Colorado this year. And they, they can't get enough, they being the media, the media can't get enough of – the Sanders family, his quarterback son, Shador, his defensive back son, Shiloh. They just love him. They, they, he is a media event wherever he goes. And Colorado needed that. Coming off a season where you have just no hopes of winning thing, anything in the near future, and then he comes in, cleans house, 80% of the players are now gone, and he comes in and – Colorado has to be loving this. Boulder has to be loving this for all the revenue he's bringing in. The school has to be loving this because now they're getting new recruits. The school loves this probably because they're getting new students going, oh, man, I got to go where where Sanders is is playing, so I want to get student tickets. All around, great. But the odds makers have Oregon favored by 21. I don't think they're wrong. And you're right. Colorado, for the first time in umpteen years, have sold out the season. They hadn't done that in, oh, I, I don't know, probably the 80s. <clears throat> I'm not a Colorado fan, so I don't find, follow it, but they said that uh, Colorado finally sold out a season uh, for the games in a long time. I mean, I, I get it. They're playing a little bit better than what we thought. They still beat three teams they should have beat. It took double overtime at home to beat a Colorado State team that they were favored by, oh, by the way, 20, right? Yeah, and, they didn't come to play that no. that night. And that well, was like a late night game too. Yeah. It was like you're in prime time. You're let's let's see how you actually do. And then they kind of just like dropped the ball. Yeah. And Colorado State turned the ball over, I think, four times, had 17 some penalties, over a hundred and some. So constantly shot themselves in the foot. Easily could have walked away with that game with a win if they could have kept and it was dumb things. We were watching the game. It was late hits. It was, you know, personal fouls at the wrong time. You're just dumb thing. Colorado State didn't have the mental fortitude to to win the game on a lot of their penalties. And then, you know, the turnovers, you're just like, you're giving it to them. I think uh, his son, the safety, scored on a pick and score to after they were being shut down. Colorado couldn't move the ball. Their first touchdown was the Sanders' son. I forget his first name, but the defensive guy, Shiloh. Shiloh, thank you. Yeah. Shiloh scored for him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I totally agree. Oregon is a way better team. It might be a wake-up call for Colorado fans as far as if we can get the national championship talk out of the window, which I'm not sure where that comes from. But, yeah, Oregon's runs the ball well. They pass the ball well. And, by the way, they play defense. I feel Colorado State didn't get as much love as they deserve. I feel that their new coach has them pointed in the right direction, Fact. and they did a great job of keeping Colorado frustrated. Colorado wasn't ready for that. They thought they were going to come in and just roll over these Rams like they were nobody. And I, I feel that they had that that little bit of elevated confidence, cockiness, whatever you want to call it, and felt like they didn't have to work as hard, which I think was unfortunately a wake-up call for anybody's team that shows up on Colorado's schedule. That being said, I'm going to go out of limb, and I think Colorado pulls the upset here. 
I, I, I feel Oregon is probably a better team. And I feel that for however, whatever reason that Colorado can get it done. And I, I just looking at, okay, Oregon schedule, they played Portland state. I don't know who that is. I've never heard big of sky. Okay. Big sky conference. Not good. <laughs> right. Right. They put up 81 points on them. Texas tech 38, 30. I think Colorado is 10 times better than Texas tech. And then you followed up with Hawaii. They let Hawaii score 10 points. I think Oregon is in for a match and I don't feel that the overs set at 70 and a half or out of the realm. So I'm going Colorado to win and I would take the overs all day long. I'm going to take Oregon and I'm going to take that over number because I'm with you. I'm thinking this thing is just going to be a track meet up and down, up and down. But Colorado, I'm thinking they're going to be three and two here after next week because they go to Oregon. Oh, they're ne- their upcoming schedule is stout. Oh, yeah. They go to Oregon this week, and then they go to USC next week. Yeah. And it's like, ooh. That, that's why if, if you join this Pac-12, and now we're going to see how much you can do inside of it because the big boys are coming, and you're going you're gonna to find out just how good your team is here in the next two weeks and what kind of bounce back you have after that because – they play Oregon and then USC, and then after that they go to, or have Arizona State at home. I'm not really sure which one it was, but uh, yeah. So I mean, you're looking at a couple of stout teams there, and we'll see how you bounce back. Because I'm thinking you're going to be three and two going into Arizona State, and then we'll see how you do out of that. Yeah. Okay. So Oregon this week for Colorado. Next week, number five USC potential Heisman versus Heisman. Yeah. quarterback or Heisman vote getters. Then, like you said, Arizona State, Stanford, if they're playing volleyball, yeah, I'd pick Stanford all day long, but it's football, so never mind. Uh, Colorado gets that one. And then they go to UCLA, who's ranked 22. That's going to be a dogfight for them. Oregon State, who's just come on strong out of nowhere, they're ranked 14. And then to finish the season, Arizona, Washington State, and then they finally have number Utah. eleven Utah to finish out the season. They they have a they have a tough schedule. They have a very tough schedule. All right, James, I, we haven't heard from you about this game yet. I yeah, and it's just I mean I've been saying it from the beginning of the year that Colorado probably five wins. They're in a Pac-12. You're right. They've been there. They haven't won games. They won one last year because the Pac-12 don't get love, but those teams are really really good. All the ones you mentioned, I, I give you the Stanford game. Uh, the Arizona, I give you a coin flip, you know. But the UCLA, the Utahs, I mean, I just don't see them in that game. This one right here at the Oregon, Colorado accidentally runs for 60 yards a game. Oregon only has given up 120. But Colorado's given up almost 200 yards rushing a game, and you have an Oregon team that's not known for it, but they're rushing for over 200 yards a game. So... Oregon's going to know Colorado's one-dimensional. They want to throw the ball. It's 400 yards a game they're throwing for. But, by the way, Oregon's only given up 160. Also, that's with that Texas Tech team that air raids it out and puts up the 30 points on them. I think Oregon playing Texas Tech helps them out in this game as far as getting ready for a 70-30 pass-run ratio. Uh, Yeah, I don't know about the covering... I'll give you Colorado might push it a little bit there, but I'm going to go with the under the 71, uh, mainly with Oregon and the new clock. I mean, I don't know if you guys have really watched or paid attention to the new clock in the college. That plays a huge role yeah, in games now. The, yeah, the, it's going a little bit quicker, and if Oregon can limit the number of times Colorado's on the field by running the ball and being more disciplined and not getting caught up in all the trash talk and getting the dumb penalties, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we get to the – 37 40 game. I think it's more of a 35 30 game. So, but yeah, I'll take Oregon and unders if you want. So, what helped them beat Texas Tech? They had three interceptions. So, Texas Tech threw for 282 yards and ran for 174 against Oregon. 
And then Oregon threw for 359 yards and rushed for 113. So had they not gotten those three interceptions, I think Texas Tech would have got them. Uh, hey, you know, you say that, and had Colorado not got three lucky fumbles against Nebraska, Nebraska would have got them. <laughs> so I'm just saying. And to me, interceptions you're earned, right? Defenders are there. They have to catch the ball. The fumbles that Nebraska gave Colorado, we just threw the ball on the ground and said, here, go get it. We don't want it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, that's the only difference I look at. And again, you had a Texas Tech team run for 100 some yards. Colorado's not rushing for 100 yards on anyone. No, no, they haven't proved that they have any sort of running game whatsoever okay. yet. Yeah. Yeah, the kid's really good, right? Right. Every I, time I see him, I think when he has the ball in his hand, I'm not saying Marshall Falk like, but he is a difference maker. But whatever reason, I, I get it. We got to let uh, Shador throw the ball. And ah. if the running back was Dion's son, yes, he would be getting every carry 25 a game. Okay. So that being said, I pulled up their running backs, Dylan Edwards. That's He's, the one. He is from Derby, Kansas. So not too far away from us. And he is currently five yards a rush. Okay. 5.4. Very respectable. Yep. So I'd say that's not a bad number. And has he had more than 10 carries in a game? Um, I can't wrap it up. He's only had 25 rushing attempts. Yeah. In three games. That's eight a game. It's. Uh, that's terrible. The, the most he's had was 10, and that was against Colorado State. And he averaged 5.7 against them. I was going to say, he right. had to go to double over. So he had nine against Nebraska, 6.1 yard. Average with a long of 34. And the TCU game, he had six carries and averaged four yards. He's an undersized back. He's 5'9", 170. He's not a bruiser. He's just going to make you miss. And he's just going to run away from you. And But their whole offensive scheme is, uh, is pass, 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 pass. Yeah. And when you do the spread, that's when your draw plays and your pitch plays work, right? I don't know. Yeah, we, like, so, we got to move on. We got to yeah. move on. We're, we're spending too run, much. Otherwise, we're not going like to get to the rest of these games. So, Ohio yeah. State, number six on the road, number nine, Notre Dame. James? Yeah, uh, Notre Dame gets its first real test uh, along with Ohio State. We'll get its first real test together here. Um, I, I've never been a real fan of Notre Dame. <clears throat> I always seem to be I don't know, quarterback lacking. They always have a really good defense and a heck of a running game. But for whatever reason, they, they have decent quarterbacks, not great. Ohio State hasn't looked that great to me this year. They haven't played anyone either. They, Indiana, 23 to 20. I'm sorry, 23 to 3. They started slow in that game, too. Really slow, right? Youngstown State, it was more of a second half. Uh, Western Kentucky, they put in 63. More of an opening, but again, it's Western Kentucky, right? Yeah. So, and, you know, Notre Dame's won, uh, you know, ending last year all the way through this year. They have uh, already four games under their belt. They had that week zero game. Uh, they beat Navy, put up 42. They're averaging, oh, good grief, 45 points a game. At least. I'm looking at the scores right now, and it's yeah. looking like they've been proficient in offense at least. So, yeah. I, I like the... Uh, I like the number on this one at uh, 55. I think yeah. he can make it over that for sure. You know, the, Yeah, that I could see. If Ohio State comes out and actually starts the game fast, unlike what they did against Indiana, you could really see this going over that 55 number pretty yep. quick. I, I don't like that they gave up. NC State gave up, or Notre Dame gave up 24 to NC State uh, defensively. Uh, man, I... So on the fence on this game, it's at Notre Dame. So I will give I will actually give Notre Dame a nod. Um, with it being the home team here, because I think they're going to be evenly matched. I, like again, I don't know if I was, Ohio State's finally found their groove or what they're doing in their play calling. Um, I tell you what, this new Notre Dame coach, he's got some kind of mojo going over there. I've watched two of their games this year and. They really like playing for this guy. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i take Notre Dame in a mild upset. Uh, they are at home. They're both top 10 ranked teams. Points don't matter. I'll take Notre Dame at home. I'm going to go Ohio State on this one. This is one of those where, you know, Ohio State's a, a team that's got to start competing for the national championship every year. And 
you know, they're going to be one of these who's looking towards the playoffs. So they're going to just start, start building and start building and building. And, you know, this is one of those games where you got to, you got to start it out. You got to start out strong, you got to start out fast and you got to just go. Um, I, I don't like that negative three number. Ooh. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Top 10 teams, points really yeah. don't matter. It's just a, Excuse and me. Three is almost even, especially if you're right. a road team. Yeah. I, I'm taking Notre Dame just for the fact they're at home. Every, everything on this shows we're evenly matched. When you look at yards they give up and yards they've given, so Ohio State only allows 80 some yards on the average per game rushing, a little over 140 yards passing. Notre Dame's the same way, a little over 126 <laughs> yards passing, passing per game and a little over 107 yards rushing. So I, that's why I'm going the home team, Notre Dame, and I'm going unders. Mm. Um, and again, uh, to try to cram all these games in, let's move on to the Arkansas-LSU game. Arkansas on the road, number 12, LSU. I was right with my pick last week on that LSU-Mississippi State game. And yeah, I'm, we were. And I'm thinking that LSU does it again. Um, I'm taking them over Arkansas. I like that over number again. I think they're going to do a lot of scoring in this game. I got a buddy who's an Arkansas fan, and he'll probably hate that. But uh, I, I don't think I'm going to take that 17-and-a-half number. I will take it to be a little bit closer game than that. So I'm going to say LSU with the over. All right, LSU wins, Arkansas covers, and the and the overs. Um, I, I'm right there with you because I think Arkansas can play defense. Um, they, they did lose to BYU. They held Kent to six points, and I know LSU has a lot of offense. They they put up 72 points on Grambling. Um, they only scored 24 points against Florida State, but Florida State just might be for real this year. They got a pretty good scare last week. Yeah, they did. <laughs> a lot of teams had a pretty no, good yeah, scare oh yeah, last yeah, yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Alabama, Texas, even Michigan got off to a slow start, so... But I, I think LSU gets it done. I just don't think they cover that 17 points. Yeah, uh, I'm right in line with you guys. Arkansas hasn't been battle-tested yet. LSU has two games already, like we talked last week. Mississippi State already playing, you know, the Florida State loss. Their offense is very high-powered, which is not normal. They're normally known for their defense. Um, right now, Arkansas is only showing 55 yards rushing a game, giving it up defensively. Uh, that might get a little kink in that armor. I, I could see LSU getting the 150 mark, maybe even the 200, depending on how the game is in the second half. Uh, yeah, I'll take LSU and 17. Yeah, wow. Um, right, 17 and a half points. I, I, don't, I don't think Arkansas has a great offense. Uh, yeah, let's just, just take LSU and I'll just leave all those numbers alone. Just <laughs> If I have to parlay it in, whatever it is, just give me basic LSU to win the game at home. Sounds good. Moving to the Iowa-Penn State game. Iowa on the road going to Penn State. Penn State number seven, Iowa 24. And who wants to jump on this one first? I'll take this one first. Uh, I'm, I'm taking that Penn State game, and I'm taking Penn State with the over. I'm, I'll take that 14.5 number. I think they're going to win and cover. Iowa, they just don't have the offense to keep up with the Penn State. It seems like every year they're built on defense and one good tight end. And it's like NFL tight end. Yeah. 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 It, you know, you don't got a you don't got a quarterback. You, you know, it's just like I, I don't see him really competing against Penn State because Kirk Ferentz has just taken those guys to, you know, it's defense and it's hard nose and it's like Okay, but like the rest of the Ohio states and the Michigans, they're all starting to really take the offense in that next direction, that next step. And, and you know, you have to keep up. And at some point, they're going to have to adapt because I, I don't see them as just a dominant offense at all. And, you know, I, I'll take Penn State on this one. James? Yeah, you, you nailed it. Uh, they're throwing for 150 yards. They're rushing for 150 yards. 300 yards a game, and they've played people like uh, USU, Iowa State, and Western Michigan. 
Western Michigan, they put up 41. I was I did some reading, and it looks like the offensive coordinator for Iowa has to average 35 points a game, or he's out. So he's only hit 35 once this year. So good luck. Penn State, you're not going to do it. Um, yeah, I, I see Penn State, I can't say run away, but late it will, early it'll be somewhat of a battle because of Iowa's defense. They played a really tight game last year without any offense. Their defense was amazing. Um, but yeah, I'll take Penn State at home, and why not just say they cover? I'm looking at Penn State's last game against Illinois. I feel that Iowa is similarly talented to an Illinois. And with the with the overs at 40, um, they got to 43 last week against Illinois. For whatever reason, I, I said Iowa is similarly talented to Illinois, but I think they might have a better defense than Illinois. So I am taking Penn State for the win, Iowa to cover, and I would take unders on that one. But we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, don't listen to me. I only got one college pick right last week, and that was Nebraska. So <laughs> moving over to the NFL. Did NF- you hit the LSU game with me? Yeah, but it was a side one. It wasn't one of the main ones. Okay. So but yeah, so okay, I got those two, but the other ones I was all wrong. So earlier when I talked to Roger, Roger thinks they win kind of what you're thinking, um, you know, going six and six or maybe seven and five, going back to that Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. And I think they might get seven and eight wins. Um, the reason I said that, I'm trying to go back to our earlier picks last week. Uh, so. We had UNC at Minnesota. Yeah. You were the only one that picked UNC. James and I took Minnesota and you were right all day long on that one. Houston at TCU. Who won that game? TCU out? won. I TCU can't. won. North Texas won. Uh, those I think, are the ones I think all of us picked Louisiana Tech in that game. We did. Week. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. We and got fooled by the numbers. We did. I took Mississippi State. I was completely wrong against the LSU, and you guys both took LSU. So I only had a, let's see. I can't remember who I took in the TCU Houston one. You took you uh you took TCU, TCU in the overs. Yeah, you did. And and they won that one or I missed this. I'm... TCU won, but I don't know if they covered. I don't I don't know what the final was. 64. Ooh, I don't I don't think Houston scored that much, but I could be out. Yeah, I would have to bring it up here, but um while I look up that score, we're going to go to the NFL. We're going to go Broncos, Dolphins. Broncos are going on the road. Down to Miami. Miami's favored, obviously. Donkey's just, I don't know. Sean Payton. I, I don't think I don't think the problem Sean Payton. I think the problem starts with their quarterback. And that he's five nine. <laughs> but he got it done at, at, at Seattle. Something's changed in his outlook because he got into a fight with his head coach at Seattle. And now I, I think it, it's the same fight with with a new coach at a new city. So I think it's all day long, Miami. I think they cover no problem. I am completely with you. I have never been really much of a believer in uh, Russell Wilson. And I think Tua kind of suffers from the same thing. The only difference between the two of them, Tua is younger and he can move quicker to get out of that pocket when it collapses. And I think that's where Russell has faltered is, you know, age is caught up with him, catches up with all of us and, you know, he's used to be one of these guys where you were really scared. You, you had a quarterback spy on him all the time. And so I think that's that's changed. I mean, Tyreek Hill and Tua, they seem to be just the combo right now, going up and down the field and throw it as far as you can, and Tyreek will go and get it. So I like Miami, and I like that over number. So I'm going to take them to cover, and I'm going to say that they uh, definitely make it over 48. I, I think that's... I think that's an easy get for for this game. James? I, I just want to know what happened. They were up 21-3, to three, I believe, at one time before they gave up 11 right before halftime. Um, come out in the second half, they got off such a hard start against Washington last week. I was really surprised because obviously I think all of us picked Washington. Uh, I know I did. I, and I know I, was, I picked Denver, but I was watching the highlights of that game, and it seemed like Washington's defense in the second half really came on. Right, but Denver had such a great game plan going in. Like I said, they 21 points right away. Russell was looking unstoppable. He looked, not Russell of old, but he had, was in 
And you had the stadium in it? Yeah, everyone's going there at home, and all of a sudden, whatever happened, happened. And, yeah, I'm with you. So now you go, one, on the road to a Dolphins team that, uh, man, might actually compete for the East with the Bills. Peter was the only one who took the Broncos last week against Washington. I took Washington in the unders, so I would have lost my unders bet because it went above 60. And the the overs and unders last week were just a a pitiful, I want to say, 30-something. Yeah. 39. Um, and James also took Washington. I, are you, are you, you're, you're taking Miami this week on this one, Yeah, right? I, Yeah, I think it's one of those no-brainers. Uh, I think they, yeah, they win by a touchdown. If we have to do the points, it'll be Miami at home with Tyreek Hill and Waddle. It's uh, too much for the Broncos. The Falcons at the Lions. I think this is going to be a great game. I think this is going to be one of those just whoever has the ball last gets it done. Um, a few days ago, I looked, the line stayed the same. Okay. It is three and the overs are set at 46. Um, what do you think, Peter? I think it's absolutely a pick them. I mean, just a hundred percent a pick them. Like you said, whoever's got the ball last and it, it's going to be close. I know, you know, watching the Packers Falcons game from last week, Falcons, they're, they're going to be tough and you know, they're not a team that's really scared anybody. I don't think a lot of people put a lot of faith in them this year. And now they're coming out and really starting to show, hey, we're, we're not we're not scared of anybody. We're going to come out and we're going to play hard and we're going to do the best we can. And I think that Lions team with uh, Dan Campbell, at coach, he's really got them clicking. He's got them moving in the right direction. And I'm really excited for them, those guys to actually do something for once in their Careers, you know, it's been so long that the Lions have just been the scapegoat of the NFL. So, yeah, this is a pick 'em for me. I wouldn't touch the overs. I wouldn't touch the points. I'm just gonna say, um, Lions are at home, so I'll take the Lions. Yeah, uh, I I picked Atlanta to win the South mainly because I thought all the teams would be about 500. Here we have three teams in the South all at two and zero. Oh. I don't think anyone saw that coming. Um, Carolina, of course, with the rookie quarterbacks, not one of them. Um, Detroit. What the hell happened? You were in, at Kansas City with the benefit of a couple drop passes. You held on and beat them 21 to 20 on the road. You go at home against a Seattle team coming in there off of a loss and you lose in overtime. And did, I mean, what happened to the defense? I was so excited that Detroit was going to play defense this year. I, yeah, 37 31 in overtime at home. And you gave up a touchdown drive, so you didn't even get the ball in overtime. Um, very disappointed in Detroit, especially defensively after playing that game in Kansas City. You are at home. I'll agree 100% with Peter. Uh, Atlanta has a great team. I think the problem is Detroit is really good against the run, and their weakness is the pass, and Atlanta's weakness is the pass, although they run well. That be a John Robinson, the running back, rookie of the year. Uh, you might as well write it down now, start putting his name on the trophy. But, yeah, I'll take Detroit at home, mainly because they're at home. But, yeah, this is a neutral side. It's, it's, I hope it's a heck of a game. I hope it's 24, 21, 27, 23, something like that. Really close. Make it go. I'm going to be the odd man out. I'm going Falcons for whatever reason. I think they just get it done. One last play by Bijan Robinson punches it in at the end of the game. Game over. But you guys, are, you guys could be easily correct. I think whoever happens to have the ball last scores last wins. Moving on to the Saints at the Packers. Saints are coming into town after a win, the overtime win we mentioned against the Lions. Nope, I was kidding. We were Seahawks. It started with S, so it got me confused. (laughs) Saints at the Packers. Green Bay is favored. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. They just beat Carolina. This this game is going to be, I think, pretty good. Um, We'll see how Derek Carr does, and we'll see how Jordan Love does. And I, I think... I think they need to just Packers first game at home. They really need to just come out there with a lot of energy, take the ball first if they can, and just score. They need they need to come out hot in the first half, and then if if it comes down to it, rely on your defense because their defense has been stout this year. And like first half last week against Atlanta, they were really good, and then second half they kind of trailed off. So I hope that this they can kind of control the ball and they can uh, hold the Saints to less points, and really keep their offense off the field. So I'm going to pick the Packers. I'm going to take that uh, two points. And uh, I'll say I'll tell you over. Green Bay and overs. All right. James, what do you think? I, 
I would normally would pick the Packers. I watched the Saints uh, Carolina game there in that Monday night with that Monday night doubleheader. So I'm doing the flipping back and forth thing. Um, the Saints defense really surprises me. I mean, they've given up 15 to Tennessee and they only give up 17 to Carolina. And at late, it was only 10. They did the prevent to win thing and uh, Carolina got a touchdown late when it didn't matter. Um, I The Packers, I think are going to be good. Um I just don't know how Jordan's going to do against this uh, defense. I, I'm going to take these Saints with a defensive battle. And, uh, yeah, I don't care about the points part, but I'll just take the Saints on the road. Uh, Derek Carr clicking a little bit with Olave. And uh, they definitely need the run game. They're only getting barely getting 100 yards rushing a game. Uh, Green Bay is barely getting 88 a game. Uh, so... Yeah, I, give me the Saints. I uh, like the Saints on the road. This one's tough. When you when you have it set at two, just for the home team, and then you add Derek Carr into the mix, you have so many things that, that have to go right. If it was later in the season and then it was extra cold, I would go Green Bay. But since it's still halfway decent weather and this is a noon game, I'm going Saints. Hmm. Um. And only the reason, the only reason I'm doing this, and the only thing that I'm looking at is how they beat Tennessee, sixteen to fifteen, and then follow that up with a road win at Carolina. They kept it close. They 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 haven't turned it over a whole lot, and that's that's how they they eke out these wins. Yeah, Derek Carr has two interceptions in two games. Not bad. Moving on. Uh, Chargers at the Vikings. The last I looked, it was even. Has that changed? Minnesota by one now. Um, yeah, I, I just, Chargers are looking bad this year to start. Um, I'm going to go Vikings at home. When you look at all the 0-2 teams, uh, Vikings, Chargers, Cincinnati's got to be the three bigger surprises. Um, <laughs> The way scheduling, whatever they all should at least won one game this year. Um, Chargers, I, I'm saying, I'm telling you, as a Cowboys fan, all the hype, and I know it was talked about on this show with more going over there with the Chargers. I, there's a difference, and I'll get to it more when I talk about the Cowboys game of calling a game and calling plays, and more, most like more likely calls plays. They get in overtime. Char- I'm talking about the Chargers game yet last week. They get in overtime. Get the ball first. He calls three deep pass plays. They go three and out and punt right away and don't ever see the ball again. How do you not say, we, you know, we're, let's just drive down the field? No, it's called for three long pass plays, all incomplete, moving. Now, yes, another thing I said about Dak with the Cowboys, you don't have to throw the deep ball if it's not there, throw it down. But they don't, and Herbert didn't. He fell in love and threw all three deep, and like I said, three and out and punted, they lost the game. And that's why I would throw it. You have Herbert. No, right, but, but it if it's work. not open, right. But yeah. it didn't work. They showed, I watched the, the highlights, and they showed all three were covered. But there has to be somebody underneath it. You got two people on top. And anyway. Well, and that's why both of these teams are 0-2. Yes. Yeah. And the Vikings is the, is another. They're last in rushing. They got rid of Dalvin Cook. Thought they could just move in this other guy. It's not going to work. Uh, they just made a trade yesterday for Cam Akers from the Rams. So, and... He was a healthy scratch because, of course, he uh, wants his contract, and he said, I'm not playing. So, Do you think that helps him, though? He doesn't know the offense. He comes in, n- and are no. they going to play him right away? Right, and I don't know if he— is he'll, it- he'll know two or three plays. I think that'll be about it. Oh, I, I yeah. get that, but he's not going to know the blocking scheme. Yeah, when you're a really good—and I think he's really good. Yeah. When you're a really good running back, it really doesn't matter if you know the plays. You're going to look for the holes, and you're going to do it. Right. Well, yeah, and I don't know if this late in the game does even start this week or I don't know how many touches he'll get. That's just it. I don't but, know. Does he Has he passed his physical? I haven't heard. Oh, it just happened late, not late last, last night, 8, 9 o'clock. No, I know. Going through, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, I don't think right. he even plays. So No, no. What I was getting at is that Minnesota realizes we need to run the ball to win. Cousins <laughs> doing great. Cousins playing well. We just can't run the ball enough. So... Again, like a pick on like the first three we've done. Every one of these have been right. Like, well, no, okay, Dolphins is a no-brainer. Um, 
it, Vikings at home. So let me get Vikings at home. Their defense isn't very good. Um, Chargers might throw them a pick or two to keep them in it. Uh, let's just take Vikings at home. James, that in here, did you get a pick in on this one? I haven't yet. And I was going to say Chargers in the over. Um, and my reason is you look at their first two games. They lost both of them by three. One of them in overtime and one of them to Miami. And that game was just an absolute shootout. I think they're the best 0-2 team out there. They're the team that has just consistently scored points but come up short. And I think the Vikings are right there with them, but the Vikings have made more mistakes with the turnovers. And there there was a couple of them last week that stung them, that Justin Jefferson fumble into the oh end zone gosh. right before the half. That was insanity. That flipped the game right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so I think, I think the Chargers are probably – I thought that last week they were the best 0-1 team, and I think this week they're the best 0-2 team. So I'm going to take the Chargers. Okay, so this is about all the 0-2 teams right now. Only the 1993 Cowboys, 2001 Patriots, and the 07 Giants have gone on to win a Super Bowl after losing their first two games. So there are nine teams right now that have a huge challenge in front of them. Arizona Cardinals suck. Chicago Bears, not very good. Cincinnati Bengals not should good. be good, but not very good. I haven't clicked yet. No. Texans? Ugh. Really? Yuck. Panthers? Uh, I don't know. Give Bryce Young a couple of years, and then we'll see if he right. gains three inches in height, and maybe then we'll say. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that they they have a long road, and they're, they're not getting to the, the no. promised land Super Bowl this year. Broncos? No effing way. I'll, I'll be surprised if they win three games this year. The Patriots? I think Belichick needs to go. I don't see them winning very many games. I don't think I don't think they get above seven uh, five hundred this year. The Chargers and the Vikings, the two teams that we're just talking about that are playing each other, they're both owned two. One team should win. This could also come down to a tie. But wouldn't that be amazing? You're you're like one of these teams are going to come out with a win, and they go oh two and one. Yeah, <laughs> it, it could happen. <laughs> I mean, last last week, the, the Chargers already were in an overtime battle against Tennessee and lost. So, okay. I took the Vikings. James took the Vikings. Peter took the Chargers. Moving on to the Cowboys and Cardinals. James, take it away. Yeah, so we'll go right, you know, get right to it. Because obviously, I, I we're all picking the Cowboys. It's this defense. You can't go against them. Uh, it depends if you want the points or not. But the difference is right now, me and my brother are texting, talking about the difference in McCarthy calling plays and Kellen Moore. <clears throat> Mike McCarthy calls a game. Sean Payton calls the game, meaning you're setting up plays for later down the road. You're setting up plays for down and distant situations to make it easier and more a prolific drive. Dallas hasn't been a great on defense. You can argue the game one, all the rain at New York, first game of the season. Numerous starters didn't play, a little rusty. Last week, they played the Jets defense, who, by the way, shut down Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, who everybody says is way better than Dak. And they go put up 30 on them. Obviously, the defense helped out a lot. So now this will be the first real test for me on this offense, this West Coast, or I'm sorry, Texas Coast offense that they're calling it. McCarthy making a game plan. Uh, what are we looking at? 43 points. Yeah, Dallas on their own puts up 35 points in this game again. Uh, the defense is going to have three or four sacks, probably at least two takeaways. I mean, right now I don't think, and nothing against the Niners. I'll go back to them a little bit later on final thoughts. Uh, there's no defense better than the Cowboys right now in the NFL. Uh, Eagles are not there. Carolina's not there. I'm sorry, not Carolina. 49ers aren't there. The Steelers aren't there. <laughs> um, right now, yeah. So Dallas, the points, whatever, and uh, I, they're putting up 35 easily. I'm going Dallas, Arizona covers, and I'm going unders. And the reason I do that, so they, they set the overs unders too high for Dallas all year long. Giants, the Cowboys alone scored 40 points, and they didn't hit the overs. The New York Jets, Dallas wins 30 to 10. And the overs on that game were 39 and a half is what I got written down from last week. Well, 38 and a half, but yeah, depending on where you got it. So they still hit the overs. They hit the overs on that one, but I, I don't see them hitting the overs on this one, which were set at 43 and a half. Um, Peter? 
I, I'm going to take the Cowboys to cover the number, but not the over as well. I think I think we're going to see a, a probably 31 points at least out of the Cowboys, and I'm not looking at the Cardinals as a very prolific offense. And so I'm, I'm saying 10 possibly in, in per maybe. game. Yeah, per game average, they're still putting up 300, a little over 300 yards passing, a little over 180 yards rushing. So, oh, Derek, I'm sorry, 180 yards ru- uh, passing, 123 yards rushing. Go ahead. You're having Arizona cover the 10 points? It's actually went up to 12. So you're saying Arizona covers the 12? I'm saying Arizona covers the 12, Dallas wins. If it would have stayed at oh. 10, if it would have stayed at 10, I would have think Dallas covers that 10. For for whatever reason, I think, I th- and, okay, so... They lose to Washington by four points. They they lose to New York Giants by. They fell apart in that game. Yeah, they I, had a twenty some point lead at halftime. I, yeah, I it know it was twenty to nothing, and then they only scored eight points in the second half. Right, right. It, so, I feel Arizona can put up points to a degree. They fall apart. Things happen. I don't see him losing by 12. I see him losing by 10. All day long, I see him losing by 10. Then he's got to hit the overs because Dallas is scoring 30. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, that's why I think it's just weird because they they go into Arizona. Um, that stadium's going to be packed with Dallas fans. Yes. Oh, it will be. Yes. It will be. It it's will a be. home game every time they play there. Yeah. Okay, we got to move on. Um, Eagles at Buccaneers. This one for me is is kind of a crazy one because the Eagles have not played great this year so far and the Buccaneers have started out strong. And I'm, I've just been so surprised by that. Um, I don't love the over number on this one. I, I would say, I'll say, I'll take the Bucks because they're at home. But I'm going to say they'll, they'll cover the number, but nobody's going to cover that over. So I'm going to say Bucks at home to cover. I'm going to go with Bucks again because... Earlier, a few weeks ago, I said Baker Mayfield has something to prove, and I think he's still got something to prove. And the only reason I'm taking him is because he's at home. Um, this could be the week that maybe all of a sudden Philadelphia just starts clamping down on defense. But they, the Bucks have beaten Chicago and Minnesota. Uh, they went into Minnesota, and the Eagles right now – have also beaten Minnesota 34 to 28. And when the Bucs beat Minnesota, it was 20 to 17. So that's why I'm taking the Bucs. And I'm also going to go with the, I don't know, 46. Uh, yeah, I'll go unders on this one. James? Yeah, uh, Bucks defense. I'm not a, I don't like Baker Mayfield. I don't like Jalen Hurts either. There's two 2 0 teams that I think are a weak 2 0. Uh, Eagles. Barely win against New England, squeeze out a win against Minnesota, giving up 28 points. The Bucks have played the same Minnesota team, which we already talked about their woes, and a Bears team that they gave up 17 points to, but put up 27. Uh, yeah, when you talk about two and O teams, there's probably two of the weakest. Uh, but the Bucks only given up 50 yards, 55 rushing yards, and 270. Eagles are giving up 340 through the air. Uh, that's pretty darn, that's a lot of yards. Yeah, that's bad. You know, honestly, when you look at the two quarterbacks they played in Mac Jones, obviously Kirk Cousins is legit, but 340 a game, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, give me bucks at home. Why? I have no idea. Uh, it's, to me, another coin flip. So I'll take the home team uh, to win this one. Rams and Bengals, this is the other double header Monday night game. Rams on the road to the Bengals. Cincinnati is favored. Um, let's see here. Did it go up since I looked earlier in the week? It is still at two and a half and the overs have gone. Nope. They've also stayed at 43. Uh, wow. One and one Rams. Oh, and two Cincy. Uh, um, I don't know why, but I'm taking the Bengals. They figured out once here at home. You know, Burrow's doubtful, right? Yeah, that's, I know. Okay. I, He's got all the way till Monday night to get help. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm going to take the Rams on this one. i am been watching a little bit of that Cincinnati team, and their offensive line does not look good. And I think you're just setting that up for Aaron Donald to just come and steamroll Joe Burrow a couple times. I'm going to say Rams win this one and cover the number. Um, I'm going to say over 
Because I, I think this could be a, a good game. It could be a shootout. If Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow actually do score some points, I'm okay with that. I mean, I think the Rams can go right there to them. They've had a guy, really, that Paco Nakua, that's really picked up this year. And it's like, who's this guy? Where is he from? What the heck is he? You know, so I, I think you could you could see some points being scored in this game. I think it'll be a good Monday night game and good in that late time frame, I'm hoping. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'll take uh, Rams and the over. Yeah, and I, you know, gave Robinson the rookie of the year, but that Paco guy, if he stays on pace, it's going to be a heck of a voting between the two of them. That guy is out of nowhere. It wasn't highly touted. It wasn't big talked about. But anyway. Nobody even knows who he is. No, no one does. And he's uh, pretty darn good. Yeah, and my reasoning for picking the Rams on this will be the opposite of the other side of the ball. The Bengals' defense all through preseason was terrible. I, you know, I told my son a couple of times, I was like, man, I hope it's just a vanilla defense that they're calling. No, 200 yards passing, 200 yards rushing a game uh, against Baltimore and Cleveland. By the way, two division games, you're 0-2 in the division. That's a huge hole. Forget the fact that you're already 0-2. You get this game at home. Even if Burrow plays, it's a weak calf. Like you said, he's going to be running for his, not for his life, but trying to stay mobile and get out of it so avoid the sack. Uh, I don't think this is that close. Unfortunately, the two and a half points, I think, is pretty low. Uh, I see the Rams running between seven to ten points. Uh, they're playing really good football. Uh, McVay is another one of those guys that call a game and doesn't just call plays. So uh, I like the Rams at Cincinnati. All right, we're at the final thoughts point of our show. Yeah, so we got the the one Thursday night game tonight we didn't call. Obviously, it's uh, Giants 49ers. Um, I, I, I believe it's a no-brainer with the 49ers winning, favored by 10 and some points. I was totally wrong. I You know, I've been not necessarily bashing on Pur- Purdy, but I didn't think he had enough for the eye test to say, you know, to put him in these this fear of an elite quarterback. But he's playing great. Uh, whatever reason, that offense that Shanahan runs with him, is uh, really good. So if you guys haven't noticed, I mean, a lot of you guys have. I'm late to the party. I get it. But, uh, yeah, I'll back up and say, you know, Purdy, Purdy and the Niners are actually going to play a lot better football. Tonight, McCaffrey can tie Jerry Rice for 12 t- touched twelve games in a row with a touchdown. So, and he hasn't been in the Niners very long, and he's already ready to tie Jerry Rice records. Pretty impressive. Yeah. So- uh, 20, 2013 was the last time we had uh, the Ravens play the Niners, and it was the Harbaugh Bowl. Um, if if anybody forgets, it was the game. Niners were just just taking them to, to school, basically, and then the lights literally go out. They they had a huge power outage or what happens, and then after, I want to say, uh, 45 Hours, minutes to yeah. an hour delay, Ravens came back, and then the, the script was flipped, and then it was just the Ravens. Yeah. So, and Beyonce halftime, right? And they supposedly used too much juice or something got messed up or, yeah. Sure. Right. I don't remember. I remember the lights going out. I don't remember who was halftime, though. I, it's so in do New Orleans, we, yeah. So does Lamar take the Ravens back to the Super Bowl and do the 49ers get back to the Super Bowl? It won't be Harbaugh versus Harbaugh, but both teams are looking really good. Yeah. Um, do you have it today in sports? I do. Do you guys want to guess what the longest punt in NFL history is? 99 yards. I was going to say 85. Uh, close. 98. Daryl, you're close. 98. Uh, it was on this day, 1969, by the New York Jets, Steve O'Neill. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, I've got his jersey. Oh, ah, there, no, there you go. I know. I yeah. know. I know. The, the weird thing is that, I mean, it was already long enough. It, it bounced at the 33. So to go from the back of the end zone across the 50 to the other guy's 33, that's a hell of a kick in itself. And it rolled down. Obviously, the returner left, had left for a spin. They downed it at the one-yard line, which was, <laughs> wow. So, 99-yard punt. If you guys know when they measure punt, it's from the one-yard line, not the back. You don't get credit. Yeah. Wherever they from the 10 yards. The line, right. Right. The line of scrimmage. Silly? The line of scrimmage. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. The line of scrimmage. They, yeah. they carry it for the field goals, though. Right. You know, the 13 Thank yards you. or whatever you do for the field goal. Yes, they do. <laughs> if I'm a punter, I'm... Raise that flag. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember this day back in 91. I was early in the Air Force. Excuse me. And the USA announced a dream team. Me and my ESPN crew 
we talked about this for days and mainly of who didn't get on the team and who we thought should be on the team and this and that. And, you know, cause you have your favorite players, but yeah, it was this day in, in uh, 91 that the dream team was announced for the 92 Olympics. And then, uh, the other thing we had the Ryder cup coming up, um, pretty excited for the U S led start to finish in 08 to regain the cup after three years of losing. So not only did they win it back, but from day one to day four, they owned it and uh, ran through it in 2008. All right. I've got a few things here and it was before my time, but I think it's worth mentioning. Um, Ohio state plays Notre Dame. So I've got a couple, couple of things here. Archie Griffin, Ohio state in 1973, he started his string of 31 games of rushing for at least a hundred yards And it started with a 56 to seven route against Minnesota. So 1973 was the start of 31 straight games where Archie Griffin had a hundred plus yards. But that was back when Notre Dame was just a powerhouse though. Yeah. Okay. He played for Ohio state. Oh, excuse me. No, no, it's all good. So my Notre Dame thing was in 1989, number one, Notre Dame beats number two, Michigan, 24 to 19 in Ann Arbor. And do you know who was the star of that game? Or the running back? Rocket Ishmael. He, he know, steals the show. He returns kickoffs of 88 yards and 92 yards for touchdowns. And it's the second time he has two kickoff returns for touchdowns. He wasn't a great receiver for Dallas. I know he went to Dallas for a while. He just couldn't catch very good. We've already ran over the, the one-hour mark. Peter, you got anything else? I don't. All not right. today. That's Peter. See you. James, I'm Daryl. Go watch some sports. <laughs>